Welcome everybody to our uh, webinar, Aquaphotomics webinar. And I'm, I'm so happy to open the first webinar this year called um, Devoted to the, our annual award. So, um, and I am grateful to all board members of International Society of Aquaphotomics um, agreed to um, have an award for the best scientific um, work. And this year, we all agreed to be given to uh, Professor Takeuchi, um, who is our um, speaker today. And I'll um, give um, Jelena's um, word to um, tell a little bit about Professor Uchida. Hi, Hi Antonella. Thank you. So happy to see you. Yes. Thank okay, you. Elena, please. Thank you. Uh, well, hello everyone from me. I'm also very happy that we started webinars this year with Professor Takeuchi. Um, so I, just, I will actually start introduction with a little bit from, let's say, um, a personal view. I actually first um, noticed Professor uh, Takeuchi, believe it or not, uh, 10 years ago uh, in uh, France at the conference, International uh, Neurofred Conference um, at that time. And uh, at that time, Professor Takeuchi was exploring hydrophilicity and actually vitability phenomena. And uh, uh, that was uh, like an um, eye-opening thing when I saw his poster. I remember that I was taking so many uh, pictures of his poster. And then he, in, the, in the end, he proposed actually to, to send me the poster and several of his papers. And ever since, uh, I'm really closely following his work. His every publication is, as we said in the... Um, introductory letter of this of this webinar. Um, his works are really amazing. He's employing uh, near infrared and mid infrared. Uh, he's uh, exploring uh, interesting phenomena. And he's uh, able to explain this phenomena uh, in, in a way which I currently see unparalleled. So um, starting from the spectra, how he extracts information, how he presents uh, the assignments and how he builds the, really, you know, uh, the picture of this molecular of the structure of water at this, you know, like basic level, and uh, how from the structure uh, he goes to explain the functionality. It is just really exemplary, and his work is something that I also strive to. So I'm very happy that we have uh, today uh, the opportunity, and thank you for agreeing to give us the, uh, the webinar. So I'm not going to, you know, waste <laughs> time on uh, more words from me. I, I would like uh, to give words to Professor Takeuchi. So Takeuchi Sensei, please, if, you, if you're ready, you can Thank start. you, Elena. Takeuchi Sensei, please. Um, first of all, I really appreciate uh, Professor Tenkova and uh, Elena for kind invitation to this webinar. Uh, my name is Masato Takeuchi from Osaka Metropolitan University. Uh, I am very happy to introduce uh, my study here. Today, I will talk about near IR spectroscopic observation and uh, dehydration of hydroxide and hydration of oxide. Uh, before the main topic, I will introduce my first contact with near-infrared spectroscopy. When I was a postdoctoral researcher in Torino University almost 20 years ago, my mission was to uh, clarify the mechanism of the photo-induced wettability changes of titanium dioxide photocatalyst surface. Maybe you know the titanium dioxide photocatalyst surface shows high wettability under UV light radiation like this. Still now, many people uh, is believing this phenomena is achieved by increasing the surface hydroxyl groups under light radiation like this scheme. However, uh, I couldn't find any uh, experimental results to increase such kind of uh, surface OH groups. 
So my question was surface hydroxyl groups really increase under UV light irradiation? This is uh, my uh, first question. So I measured the NIR spectra uh, of water uh, at solved on titanium dioxide surface under UV light irradiation. This is my first NIR spectra. Uh, you can see here, before UV light irradiation, uh, combination band of water observed here. And this band, This band is related to the uh, hydrogen bond free water because water in carbon tetrachloride is observed here. And uh, this broad absorption band can be assigned to the hydrogen bonded water molecules. And uh, under UV light irradiation, uh, absorption amount of water decreases. So this is the origin of uh, high wet stability. Uh, details is uh, already published in this paper. And also this slide is interesting for you because the, this is the NIR spectra of water absorbed on titanium dioxide surface under cooling conditions at 10 degrees. And before cooling, this is the adsorption of water band. And uh, under cooling at uh, 10 degrees, this band increase. But the uh, band position is related to the hydrogen bonded water molecules. I mean, the adsorption water molecule on the solid surface is quite sensitive to the temperature changes. And since these uh, researches, I am focusing on the NIR spectroscopy. So today, I will talk about three topics. First one is the dehydration of magne magnesium hydroxide and the hydration of magnesium oxide. Because this system uh, is applied for the chemical heat storage system. And the second topic is adsorption of water molecules within the zeolite cavity, uh, formation of water clusters, and also adsorption dynamics can be discussed in this section. And the third topic is the co-adsorption of ammonia and water on zeolite surfaces. Uh, I will show five different uh, results. So now I will start first topics. This is an introduction. Global warming and climate change due to the escalating emission of carbon dioxide is now a serious problem. So the researchers have focused on the efficient use of unharnessed thermal energy using chemical heat storage materials. That CHS materials store unharnessed waste, uh, waste heat at around 200 to 600 degrees centigrade by chemical reactions involving water, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide and uh, some other molecules as a heat carrier. Maybe Japanese people uh, know this system. Uh, this is a lunchbox heating system. On the bottom of the container, there is a calcium oxide and water. By mixing these chemicals, we can enjoy the hot lunch box without any electricity. In this chemical reaction, calcium oxide 
is a chemical heat storage material, and water is a heat carrier. So this is a simple explanation of chemical heat storage material. And uh, we are now focusing on these materials. This is a collaboration research with Professor Liu in Chiba University. Because dehydration of magnesium hydroxide is the input of thermal energy. This is a storage reaction. And then back reaction, the hydration of magnesium oxide it's the output of thermal energy. This reaction is a reversible. But uh, uh, dehydration reaction uh, necessitate, to, uh, necessitate about 350 uh, degrees centigrade. Uh, as you know well, the near infrared spectroscopy was first applied to analyze water content in grains in 1960. Since then, NIR spectroscopy have been applied in many fields, for example, agriculture, astronomy, healthcare, food chemistry. However, NIR spectroscopy was hardly used in surface science, especially the catalyst field. So we have uh, reported some results on the adsorption of water, uh, ammonia, hydrazine, and uh, uh, it's a mistake, the hydration of hydroxide and hydration of oxide in this topics. So now I will talk about the mechanism of magnesium hydroxide dehydration and the magnesium oxide hydration were investigated by NIR spectroscopy, especially the behavior of hydroxyl groups of the material surface involving phase transition was discussed. This is the experimental section. Magnesium hydroxide was purchased from a company. Magnesium oxide was prepared by a calcination of magnesium hydroxide at 600 degrees C. NIR measurements were carried out by using this FTNIR system in diffuse reflectance mode. We use this kind of uh, DR unit to heat the sample, uh, also the under gas flow conditions like that. And the uh, measurement conditions were shown here. Dehydration of magnesium hydroxide. We put sample here and uh, uh, heated from room temperature to 600 degrees centigrade here. And also hydration of magnesium oxide. Uh, MGO was hydrated in a constant temperature and constant humidity chamber. Uh, today, I just show 85 degrees C and the relative humidity 85% these conditions. Okay. Now I will show the results. Uh, this is the NIR spectra and the X-ray diffraction patterns for the hydration process of magnesium hydroxide. Before heat treatment, you can see three absorption bands here. First, I will explain the assignment of these uh, absorption peaks. This is the same spectra in the previous slide. And also this is a FTIR spectra in middle IR region. When we consider uh, an harmonic oscillation, 
vibrational energy can be expressed as this equation. It means fundamental vibration and first overtone vibration can be expressed as these equations. And also, uh, hydroxyl groups of silica surface can be observed. This is fundamental vibration. And this is a fast overtone, like this. This is the uh, surface hydroxyl groups, isolated OH groups on silica surface. 3740, this is fundamental. And this gold peak is due to uh, also isolated OH on silica surface. So I use these values to obtain an harmonic constant and this frequency. By using these values, I calculated the fundamental vibration from this value. You can see here, the calculated value is almost similar to the measured wave number. So I assigned a former two band can be uh, less hydrogen bonded hydroxyl. And the uh, 7,150 wave numbers can be assigned to hydrogen bonded hydroxyl groups. Then I will show the structure model of magnesium hydroxide here. Magnesium hydroxide has a layer structure and each layer uh, are interacting with each other by hydrogen, bond, hydrogen bonding. So the interlayer hydroxyls here can be assigned to the hydrogen bonded hydroxyl groups here. This one. And also when we focus on the surface, this one, this OH groups interacting with one Mg2 plus cation. It means OH corner, this part here, red part. And OH E, E means H, interact with two uh, Mg2 plus cation. And OHT, T means terrace. This OH groups interacting with three different, uh, three Mg2 plus cations. So coordination number is different, OHT, OHE, and OHC. So we uh, assigned this band, this one. Uh, interlayer OH groups. And the uh, middle one is related to a uh, OH terrace here. And then uh, higher wave number regions can be assigned to OHE and OHC. And uh, it's difficult to distinguish these two species. But we could uh, assign interlayer, terrace part, and edge part. So uh, now we go back to the uh, spectral changes. This is before heat treatment, I showed before slide. As the temperature increased, these two bands combined to be to become one band here. And also interlayer OH groups gradually decrease and disappeared at 450 degrees centigrade. 
And also, when we see the XRV patterns, the temperature increased at uh, 350 to 400 degrees C. This peak appeared. This peak can be assigned to the magnesium oxide. So these results uh, clearly indicate that this NIR spectra changes is related to the phase transition from magnesium hydroxide to magnesium oxide. These changes. Then uh, we checked the NIR spectra and also XRG patterns for hydration process of magnesium oxide at 85 degrees centigrade and the relative humidity 85%. Before hydration, we can find the isolated OH groups of MGO surface here. This sample was hydrated for 10 minutes, this one decreased, and this one appeared. This band can be assigned to the hydrogen bonded OH groups of MGO surface. Then, uh, after 30 minutes hydration, this band appear and increase to 24 hours. So, as I mentioned, this band can be interlayer hydroxyl groups. It means a uh, hydration of magnesium oxide to form MgOH2 phase here. For further discussion, uh, I will show the second derivative spectra. This is before hydration. And uh, at the hydration, reaction increased, this band decreased, and here, increase and decrease. And this one, interlayer hydroxyl groups also increase. So this is the time causes for the peak intensity. As the hydration reaction increased, this interlayer OH, and the OHH and the corner increase, but OH terrace decreased. This behavior is quite important uh, for the hydration process of uh, uh, the formation of magnesium hydroxide, because when once MgOH2 monolayer was formed on the MGO surface, both sides can be OH terrace. But at the starting uh, proceed, this OH terrace part changes to OH in interlayer OH groups. This is a uh, experimental evidence for the stacking to form multi-layer magnesium oxide and uh, magnesium hydroxide. From these results, we uh, propose the mechanism of the hydration of magnesium oxide into hydroxide. Before hydration, isolated OH exists here. Then hydrogen bonded OH appeared here. Then a uh, small piece of magnesium hydroxide sheet uh, formed on the MGO surface and covered all over the surface. Then multi-layer magnesium hydroxide formed on the MGO surface. So we could show this mechanism by NIR spectroscopy. So this is a conclusion of the first topics. 
dehydration of magnesium hydroxide and hydration of magnesium oxide were observed by NIR spectroscopy. Three different hydroxyl groups of magnesium hydroxide and two different hydroxyl groups of MGO surface could be assigned. NIR spectroscopy could detect the structure changes on magnesium oxide surface into magnesium hydroxide, which cannot be observed by X-ray diffraction measurement. Okay, let's move to the second topic, adsorption of water molecules within the zeolite cavity. Zeolite is an aluminosilicate having a molecular size 4, and the water molecule is about 3 angstrom, and the hydrogen bond distance is about 1.8 angstrom. So in the zeolite cavity, water clusters are formed. So in this study, NIR spectra of water adsorption of various zeolite materials were measured, and the formation of water clusters in the cavities was discussed from the viewpoint of hydrogen bond networks. So we discussed how water clusters form in the zeolite cavities. Uh, in this topic, we use two different zeolite materials. One is a molecular sieve 13X. This is a conventional uh, zeolite. Uh, pore size is about 1.0 nanometers. And also, we prepared the magnesium 2 plus and the proton containing white zeolite. This material has a pore size of 0 0.7 nanometers. And the NIR measurement is the same, was carried out in the same procedure. So this is the result. Uh, NIR spectra of water absorbed on molecular sieve 13X. This is a sodium type zeolite. This is the adsorption process at the room temperature. This is a before adsorption of water, but uh, just after taken from the reagent bottle, water mo some water molecules already absorbed on the surface. But from the wave number here, the water molecule is related to the almost uh, gas phase state. So we assign this band to this kind of water molecules interacting with cation site. Then uh, we measured every 20 to 25 seconds, like this 45 seconds, one minute, 130, two minutes, like this. As you can see here, this absorption band gradually increase. And the water absorption was saturated uh, almost 30 minutes. So we analyzed these spectra like this. This panel is a peak areas due to combination band of water. And the y-axis is uh, calculated as absorption amount of water. So you can see here, uh, Water adsorption increase and 20, uh, 15 to 30 minutes almost saturated. And second panel is a peak intensity of S0. S0 means here, 
and the hydrogen bonded water molecules com uh, component of H bonded water molecules here. So this one. The behavior of hydrogen bonded water molecules is completely uh, related to this behavior. But uh, H bond free water slightly decreased or almost constant during the absorption of water molecules. And the third panel is the uh, wave number changes. H bond, uh, H bond free water wave number is almost constant during the water absorption. However, the uh, H-bonded water molecules shifted to lower wave number regions. This is a, a experimental evidence of the formation of hydrogen bond networks here. And fourth panel is a ratio of S0 H bond free water to hydrogen bonded water molecules. Before adsorption, this value was almost 2.5, but this value uh, is decreased to be almost 0 0.3. It means uh, 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 this result also mean the formation of hydrogen bond networks. But in case of the liquid phase water, uh, S0 component was not observed, I showed in this paper. So in the liquid phase water, maybe this value uh, decreased to zero. So next, I will show the different structure of zeolite. This is a magnesium 2 plus a proton containing white zeolite. This is a pre treatment under heating conditions. This is at room temperature 50, 100. Like this. As increasing the heat treatment temperature, this band gradually decreased to higher wave number regions. However, if I analyze these spectra by second derivative method, uh, I will show the second derivative spectra. This is before, uh, at room temperature, 50 degrees C, 100, 150, at this temperature, this absorption component changed to here. Then this position decreased like this. This means that two different uh, water molecules, at least two different water molecules, exist in the zeolite cavities. Then we observe the adsorption process uh, from 50 degrees centigrade to room temperature. So I turn off the heater, temperature decreases like this. In this process, absorption wa water increase like this. I will show the spectra. One minute, two minutes, three, like this. You can see here, here before absorption water, uh, Peak position is here, but as increasing the absorption amount of water, this peak top slightly shifted to lower wave number regions. 
However, as I mentioned in previous slide, uh, by the second derivative analysis, this is before absorption of water. One minute here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is six, seven, eight, ten, and here, this shoulder band appeared, then this component increased. I mean, uh, in the first step, this component increase, this is a, uh, this hydrogen bonded water molecule, almost a monolayer of water. Uh, adsorb on the surface of zeolite. Then, uh, almost 30 minutes, this band appears. This is a uh, slightly H-bonded water molecule. Mm. Anyway, I will show the sec uh, conclu second part conclusion. The NIR spectra of water molecules adsorbed uh, within porous zeolite materials were measured. When the molecular, molecular sieve MS136 used as a descant was placed in the air uh, for 15 to 30 minutes, water adsorption was readily saturated. When water clusters were formed within the zeolite cavities, hydrogen bond free water molecules interacting with cation site and surface hydroxyl groups uh, were first observed at uh, 5,280 wave numbers. Then, followed by the hydrogen bonded water molecules, was observed at uh, 5,254 wave numbers. And the uh, NIR absorption band due to water clusters are dependent on the pore size, pore sizes of zeolite. For example, in case of MS136, pore size is 1.0 nanometers. In this case, the water cluster was observed uh, 5,190 wave numbers but a little bit smaller pore size of white zeolite, this cluster size was a little bit smaller, means longer wave number region absorption at the longer wave number regions were observed. And uh, this is a comparison. Water in liquid phase is around uh, 5,100 web numbers here. Okay, so I will show the third topics, co-adsorption of ammonia and water on the right surface, in, in fact, cavities. So as I mentioned in the second topic, the right is used as catalyst uh, adsorbents, ion exchangers, and so on. Especially very important in the petrochemistry and purification of exhaust gases. So zeolite surface, there is uh, this kind of ion exchange site. In this, uh, as shown here, uh, proton, if the proton is, exists on the surface, this proton works as a brain state acid site. So the what uh, ammonia molecule adsorbed on this site, this kind of ammonium ions are formed. And also ammonia adsorbed on this kind of cation site uh, molecularly adsorbed 
on the surface. So we can find these differences by FTIR spectroscopy and also NIR spectroscopy. In this study, we used the sodium type zeolite, proton type zeolite, and uh, some sodium are exchanged to kappa 2 plus and cations. We used four different zeolite materials. And the uh, ammonia adsorption was very uh, simply carried out because zeolite sample and ammonia aqueous solution of uh, 100 microliter in glass tube uh, was placed in the glass vial here. So the ammonia and the water vapor was filled in the glass vial. Then uh, ammonia and water absorbed on the uh, samples. This is a before absorption of uh, kappa 2 plus zeolite. Uh, color is slight blue, but after ammonia absorption, the color becomes uh, blue. This color means a uh, kappa ammonia complex species. Okay, I will show the results. This is a uh, NIR spectra of ammonia and water absorbed on silica. It's not zeolite, but uh, before ammonia adsorption, this black line, only water as was exist on the surface, absorbed on the surface. But exposure to vapor of ammonia aqueous solution, this water band decreased and new band appeared here. And this band can be assigned to the ammonia adsorption on ah, yes, this kind of ammonia molecules interacting with sub hydroxyl groups and also the hydrogen bonded ammonia molecules. And this is a result of ammonia and water absorbed on sodium type zeolite. This one is also uh, hydrogen bonded ammonia was observed, this one and this one, due to the hydrogen bonded ammonia molecules. Ah, yes, this one. And the water molecules also absorbed on the cation site. But in case of proton type zeolite, this part and this part is uh, due to ammonia, H bonded ammonia. But this broad absorption was observed in this zeolite material. And uh, 4785 wave numbers can be assigned to the this one. Uh, ammonium ion. I will show two more slides. This is kappa 2 plus and the sodium ions uh, exist on the surface. In case of sodium type, only this band was observed. But uh, Kappa 2 plus ion exists on the surface like this. In this case, shoulder band appeared here. And the second derivative spectra, this absorption component was clearly confirmed here. And, uh, ah, sorry, this one is H bonded ammonia. And uh, 490, for 1950, this band newly observed for this sample. So we assign this band uh, is due to a 
ammonia molecules interacting with kappa 2 plus ions. Finally, in case of kappa 2 plus H plus zeolite, in this case also hydrogen bonded ammonia and uh, ammonia molecules interacting with kappa 2 plus cations was observed here. Second derivative spectra clearly indicates the this absorption component. So this is a summary of the third topics. Co-adsorption of ammonia, ammonium ion, and water molecules on various zeolite materials were successfully observed by NIR spectroscopy. In case of sodium type zeolite and also kappa 2 plus sodium zeolite, and the difference is just this species ammonia molecules interacting with kappa 2 plus ions. Also, sodium site changed to proton. This one, ammonium ion and uh, ammonia interacting with kappa 2 plus were successfully observed by NIR spectroscopy. Okay, this is all. Thank you for listening almost 45 minutes, I guess. Thank you, Professor. Mm. You okay. okay, we're back. I don't mind absolutely that it is 45 minutes. I could have listened more and I'm very grateful for, for this wonderful lecture. So, uh, we, we can now start with the questions. Um, whoever has a question, you can type them in the chat box or you can raise a hand and um, I will give you um, opportunity to ask. Uh, so before that, I just want to say that um, the, the lecture of Professor Takeuchi is being now recorded and in a few days we will post it to YouTube and we will generate uh, Japanese subtitles. So in the case um, that you may uh, prefer to uh, see um, this talk in, in Japanese, you also have uh, this option. Uh, while I wait for questions, I just wanted to say that this is, um, um, I'm, I'm very happy that I could see all these three works uh, that you presented. And I'm always astonished how um, actually you use very simple tools, you basically look at the raw spectra. And uh, this is something that, you know, uh, especially nowadays, people are using so many different chemometric tools. They're developing this uh, machine learning, deep learning methods, and we end up with, you know, like uh, constantly, basically not many very good answers. And this is so refreshing to see. And I also want to say, about your work that I really like uh, the system that you're using. You're actually using perturbation by temperature uh, to extract the, the information, which seems, seems to be very uh, valuable. And I like your experimental setup. I think, um, for example, now it occurred to me that um, it can be very useful for even, uh, let's say, um, uh, exploration in food uh, industry. Okay, we have uh, one question. So, Professor Tsenkova, please. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Professor Tekuchi, as, <clears throat> as always, since many, many years. So we, we know and I appreciate your work. I, I wonder, in um, Yelena just mentioned, but it, um, you've been using temperature. What happens if you use light? For example, light? You, you have mentioned, yes, you have mentioned UV light ah. in the beginning. And I am really, really very much interested in infrared light, mm. sunlight, uh, but especially sunlight, yeah, UV is also, but if you add specific bands, let's say water absorbent bands, um, illumination mm. at those bands, what happened to this, to, to this absor uh, absorption uh, process? And in fact, when I irradiate UV light on the sample, I measure the temperature of the oxide powder sample. 
but in case of uh, near infrared uh, measurement, I didn't uh, check the temperature changes. Um, I guess maybe slightly temperature increases because uh, if we uh, irradiate IR uh, in air conditions, some water dissolve. So um, that's uh, evidence to sample surface become dry. Yeah, what the, it, mm. yeah, usually what what, mm. what um, we have seen is when you add infrared light, for example, a specific um, band for even um, just sunlight, then you see in the beginning, if you have consecutive illuminations, in the beginning you see increase of the temperature. Mm. But after, you will see hydrogen bonding in 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 water so ah. maybe you, you you will be and then then you see decrease of the temperature of course so because you, you're working with very very small um concentrations obviously maybe you can see this very very beautifully when you add a specific um light at specific wavelength then you might mm. see making of hydrogen bonds not only evaporation of water because of the temperature. Mm. Maybe during the IR measurement, it's not a big change, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm. So when you, when you do consecutive spectral acquisition, one after another, then the change will be caused only by light. Hmm. Not only, but by 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 light itself. Yeah, this is interesting. This is not usually done in infrared spectroscopy to use consecutive and pay pay attention to that. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm really fascinated by how you know these are. Uh, I mean, the experimental setup is such that you really used high high temperatures, and I'm. Uh, impressed you know usually people do not consider that some water species are staying in these materials <laughs> you know like even at that at that temperature depends on the sample depends Today, on the sample. i show the zeolite material a uh, very high highly hydrophilic sample so the water molecules uh, still exist at uh, 300 degree C or 400 yeah. degree C. Mm. Amazing. <laughs> Incredible material. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what I wanted to say. Um, yes, so uh, just to uh, clarify, I mean, one of the um, uh, reasons that you were um, awarded with this uh, um, Award for the past year was exactly the work the, the work that you presented um, the first in, in this talk, and all the bands that you show. For uh, I mean, it is not easy maybe for the people now to understand because um, you mainly work with wave numbers, while in economics we prefer to use nanometers. But all the bands that you presented are actually uh, within the, the um, already defined VAMAX that we use in this first overton. And furthermore, you actually clarify, let's say, subspecies of these water species that we normally, normally, normally use. So this was a very, it was a huge contribution to us to better understand uh, what kind of molecular uh, species of water we, we are dealing um, with. And I'm particularly also impressed, and I, uh, I, I keep wanting actually to have um, uh, some kind of experience and uh, um, experiments uh, and to use more this combination band, because the combination band seems to be uh, very, very revealing about the gaseous face of water, what you uh, showed um, today about this almost gaseous, uh, gaseous uh, 
water water species and uh, this is something that uh, I found uh, I had a previous uh, work in water activity and this range that you uh, that you're showing in the combination band seems to provide the best information and I guess because of this um, you can see these mono layers forming and this is very very connected with um, other materials like uh, preservation of food and um, for example tissues in medicine and so on so I'm I will keep following. <laughs> what are you doing? Mm, maybe this one you mentioned. Yes, yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. This is just oof, glorious. Um, can I, I just want to ask you sure, sure, sure. something else. Um, I think nobody has done um, such contribution like you. Today you showed that the cavity size could be identified by specific absorbance bands. Now, mm. uh, do you think that we can do the, we can move this to bio to life science? Yes, this is a, but, uh, zero light, some, but sometimes difficult because the today's case one cavity and the next cavity is a little bit far. It means the water clusters in this cavity cannot interact with water clusters yes. to the next cavity. So the water clusters are easily observed like this. Independent, mm. kind of. Yes. But sometimes cavity size is a little bit smaller, but uh, uh, very close to the next to cavity. Each other. Mm. Uh -huh. So this cluster can interact with clusters in next cavity. So then you get another band, right? Yeah. In this case, uh, a little bit uh, liquid phase water uh, observed. So yes. um, I mean that not only related to the one cavity size, but the uh, cavity structure is more mm -hmm. uh, very important to mm -hmm. analyze. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, then the question arises, when, mm -hmm. we he when we see in bulk water, those bands of these mm. cavity clusters, what does it mean? Yeah. What does it mean? Mm. So, in fact, I want to discuss the liquid phase water, but uh, it's very difficult to, because water molecule is moving like that. Yes. So, uh, I want to, uh, I used the hard cavities. Yes. Mm. But it's absolutely uh, exciting and it, it really uh, makes us think a lot because it, we, we see the same bands in liquid phase. Mm. Oh, what does it mean? So what is, where is the cavity? What, what, what is the cavity in physical mean of, of, that, of mm -hmm. that cavity in, in, in liquid water? Yes. And what does it form? How is it formed? Why is it formed? <laughs> what is the um, influence? I, I connected what uh, you were talking about uh, this particular slide, for example, and these cavities in Zerlite. This really reminded me of uh, our work with water activity, where we um, had results that the higher water activity of food, for example, is related to two types of species. One, which is related to the uh, water molecules which are bound to the surface of, let's say, this matrix. We can, for example, uh, imagine the food matrix of um, uh, like, a, you know, this zeolite cavities, right? But it is fibers. A, fibers. It is a complex, but it has pores. So the, the water activity of the food is actually defined by this porous matrix and also by the um, ability of these free, almost gaseous phase molecules uh, to move through this. So this was what uh, I connected to what you were saying. But I'm sorry, uh, I have uh, other people um, raising hands, hmm. so I'm not going to comment yeah. more. Um, Professor Di Salvo, uh, can, you, can you join? Uh, yes. Professor Di Salvo, please. Yes, um, in relation to this topic and in relation to the clusters, my question is if you have a estimated which is the number of water molecules that compose that cluster and which is the critical size of that cluster to become uh, 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 
similar in properties to bulk water. Mm. In, in fact, not the different because This band 5220, this uh, combination band is related to the water clusters, uh, molecular number is uh -huh. almost three to five molecules. I, I see that, mm. okay. But uh, in case of liquid phase water, absorption band uh, picked up it around here. 5080, uh, yes, 5080 to five. So completely different in the uh, water, liquid oh, bulk water to, from these clusters. Mm. This one also, uh, as uh, Elena mentioned, the activity of water may be different from uh, bulk water. Mm, Thank you. I think. Mm. Thank You're you. welcome. Um, next question, Professor Antonella De Nino. Okay, thank, thank you. you, Professor De Salon. Thank you to you. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, about, uh, I want to talk about the, the sides of the cluster. Uh, the, the, the evidence, the existence of clusters, even in uh, bulk water, has been shown. It's possible to see by spectroscopy, by infrared spectroscopy. Uh, then, what about, about the, the size of the pores of the zeolites? Uh, there is a, a minimum size of the cluster of water, of the water cluster. If the size of the pores is less than the minimum size, inside the pores, you can collect only non-correlated water, only free water, water which have a higher energy, which is detectable with the spectroscopy. And about the number of, of waters inside a single cluster, we cannot have information, direct information from spectroscopy, but from spectroscopy, we can measure the difference in energy, the, the different energy between uh, poorly correlated or non-correlated molecules and uh, correlated um, water molecules. Uh, we talked about, years ago, we talked about uh, the, the, the existence of coherence domain in water. The existence of this cluster can be motivated by, uh, uh, by, by particular concept of physics, which include the existence of the correlations uh, induced by a quantum phenomenon. But even if you uh, don't want to consider this aspect, uh, you can see with your eyes, uh, just looking at the spectra, that water exists in two different uh, conditions. A condition of cluster, well correlated, a condition of uh, almost free, let me use this term, this is not uh, correct, but uh, like gaseous uh, water molecules. And the, the, the um, disposition inside the pores just depends on the sides of the structures. And so you can uh, exactly uh, look at the dimension of the pores just looking at your spectra. Mm. Because if you don't see any evidence of the existence of the cluster in your spectra, then you know that the size of the pores is less than the medium size of the cluster. This is very important even in biology, because just looking at the, the, the quality of the water inside the, the biological structures, you can have information about the dimension. Sure. And it's, uh, it's, it, it's interesting to see that there is a different kind of uh, water inside and outside molecules or structures that are inside the, the single cell. Uh, yes, 
uh, at the next target, I want to try the water clusters in soft materials like a polymer or some kind, uh, such kind of soft matter. But uh, uh, in fact, it's difficult to, how to say, define such kind of small, smaller size of clusters in such a soft materials. Because host material is change and move. Mm. Right. So, uh, but the size of the size of a cluster of water is determined by the temperature and is determined and the by the temperature the, also by the surface, by the contact, by the kind of the interaction with the surface. And also and maybe pressure even by mm. the by the the, the amount of solutes that are dissolved in water of course by the chemistry of water yes thank you um antonella can i ask you something when you said a single water molecules in cavities mm -hmm. um can be those single water molecules in cavities correlated uh, correlated uh, in sense of dimers or coherent, or, coherent. No, I mean, no, I mean, no, no. The, the coherence requires a minimum size. It, um, coherence established when there is a minimum size in space where molecules are correlated. Yeah. If no, the my question is, to... yes, yes, my question is, you have the size mm -hmm. for that can accommodate a single water molecule. Mm -hmm. You have it. And it's a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and you, you still have free water molecules. Are yeah. those molecules in different cavities coherent? No, no, because they don't see each other from well, a, a... well, they don't see each other, but they 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 might be coherent. How? Because, because they, they... Uh, uh, I mean the, the frequency in the vibration, the vibrational frequency makes this field around them yes so, but each molecule is each molecule is isolated it's not correlated with each other so their uh, vibrational frequency is not affected by others if the cavity is too small and there, there are only just two or three molecules inside each molecule vibrates by its own that sounds so lonely <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to... oh, no. Okay, <laughs> let's leave this discussion for another time. But I think it's very interesting. I mean, the, yes, the, yes, only, yes. the fact mm -hmm. that the cavity defines the, the band, the mm -hmm. cavity defines the, the frequency, yeah. is already a huge stuff. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I remember now. In biology. Uh, <clears throat> there is I one think it's very paper important in biology. This. Yes. Yes. There is one very interesting paper I read, uh, unfortunately they didn't do, um, they were actually in, um, they wanted to isolate the signatures of the trapped water molecule within Fuller and Cage. So they just wanted to put it in Fuller and Cage and I don't know what they did, but it would be interesting, interesting to, let's say, put single molecule in one cage, a single molecule in another cage and see if they can, you know, like establish some kind of coherence connection or they're just you know like trapped in their own prison cells <laughs> and lonely <laughs> poor water molecules hmm. yeah sorry this was a little bit mm, digression <laughs> thank you I, this is an I interesting water molecule like this but in case of proton type zeolite this water molecule acts as the oxonium ions h3 or plus uh -huh. and the uh, h uh, five or two plus, it's a dimer. Yes, yes. Mm. This is so the Grotthus stuff. In the case of proton type, they are right. Uh, to difficult to understand such kind of species. Mm. Mm. This is a simple model, but uh, in fact, I guess this part must be oxonium ion. Ah, H3O, H, H3. H3 O plus. O plus, mm. plus yes. Oh, that's, that itself is hydronium. Yeah. Mm. The oxonium ion monomer and also 
dyma exists can be exists in the zeolite cavi cavities. Ah, oh, I see. Wow. Protonated dyma on the top mm. of it. Mm. Ah, yeah. Both are interesting species. Mm, absolutely. Mm. And those cavities, uh, again, back to the biological, to, to mm. life science and um, biological tissues, lots of them. But uh, to reply the questions, I should find much smaller uh, cavity zeolite. For example, one or two water molecule, only uh -huh. one or two water molecule can exist in the uh, boa. Mm -hmm. mm. I should find such kind of zeolite material. How can you find it? You, 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 you... Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we will ask some smart people who can develop. <laughs> Thank you. I will ask a zeolite researcher. Maybe yeah. they can uh, prepare such kind of smaller size yeah. of zeolite. Mm. You can make. But it's difficult to find a commercial zeolite. Of course. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions on on these last topics or general for Professor Takeuchi's lecture? Let me see who have any raised hands. No. I Come on, guys, don't be shy. <laughs> what about some students and postdocs? Uh, was this um, um, lecture uh, okay for you? Did you understand? Could you follow Professor Takeuchi? If you have questions, please send this address. Or, or you can write in the chat now uh, the questions, and um, we can have. Sure, and of course, the, uh, the, the, the lecture is going to be uploaded to, uh, on YouTube. You can also post the questions after, I mean, you can maybe watch, and I will certainly rewatch the, the lecture because this is really useful for me. This is so um, nice, Peter. We have all the assignments, so whenever we yes. need your assignment, we'll go to the, <laughs> the webinar and we'll look exactly. at the assignment. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, then. Well, I guess, uh, Professor Takeuchi, do you have some last comments maybe mm -hmm. um, what do you what are your plans for the future i see that you're preparing two more publications which means yeah. i will be happy this year <laughs> ah. now i am trying to the fixation of carbon dioxide on such kind of basic uh, catalyst materials mm -hmm. mm. in fact the Carbonate species are difficult to be observed in NIR region. So in this case, I should use a, a middle IR region. <laughs> um, but uh, such kind of carbonate species are, hmm, I think, very interesting to to uh, not, you know, to be observed at the carbonation reaction on the surface and also in the bulk. Mm -hmm. mm. It's like a carbon capture, carbon dioxide capture. Mm -hmm. mm. And what, what is the purpose of that? Uh, for example, uh, how do you use this process? Why is it useful? Carbonation, for example. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, calcium oxide, uh, magnesium oxide can Adsorb carbon dioxide to carbonate species um, on the uh -huh, surface to... and also in the bulk. Mm -hmm. So this reaction is very important to reduce carbon dioxide uh -huh. in air. Oh, that's that's going to be a very hot topic then. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. I understand. Oh, interesting. But I, I was hoping that you will always stay close to water. <laughs> 
I'm interested also in more doing more polymers, uh, water in polymers research. So if you have any, you know, like huh, future ways. Uh, that can I ask you one, one uh, last thing? Could you please show the slide where you calculate the overtones? That was uh -huh, something that I want people to mm. see. Um, because we, this is very often, this is what we do. Yes, 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 this one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, I think we take the, the easiest way, easier way mm -hmm. of calculation, mm -hmm. the overtone. But this is a, could you please tell us again what you actually. This is a vibration yes. energy. Yes. Uh, you define the, uh, you define actually um, the constant, right? Ah, yes. Uh, this is a value due to hydroxyl group of silica. So I put this value here, uh, yes, here, and yes. this value is here. Ah, you have then, the first overtone and you have the, the fundamental. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I can calculate the this constant unharmonic constant this value and oh, also mm, the uh, frequency here this one the main mm. the eto, i used this constant to constant value to uh, measure this value from uh, this value from this measured web numbers. Uh huh. Mm. Based on the measure, you you measured seven thousand, for example, three nineteen. This is observed. This one also observed. Mm. Yes. And this so is in the first like, columns, you were you measured. And then he calculated unharmonic constant, right? From the first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you put it into the second equation and calculate the third so column. These values are almost similar. So I can uh, correlate this band to here, this band here, and this band here. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is your infrared, um, but this is your experimental uh, data of uh, of uh, uh, mid infrared, right? Mm. Okay, you have both. You have experimental band from near infrared, and you have the same sample. Ah, yeah, yeah, infrared. infrared. Mm. I see. And uh, many researchers already already reported this assignment in the previous made, literature. Mm. So that's uh, one evidence to assign for this absorption band. I see. Mm. Because in the catalysis field, many researchers uh, using this kind of mid-IR measurement to analyze surface OH groups. So I uh, referred such kind of research to mm, assign my data. Well, one thing bothers me that, for example, the, uh, the cavity, the size of cavity leads to a small change of the absorbent band. Mm. And when you, when you see the, the difference between calculated and measured, it is much bigger than then that small difference between the cavities. So, but that's, I can, I mean, this is only you can do in the calculation, right? Mm. I try. Thank you for the explanation, I understood. Thank you. It, it was useful for, for people, I think. Okay. Okay, then, well, we're, um, as usual, we extend our webinars a little bit, but I'm glad that we had this chance. And um, 
this is the last chance for anyone who wants to ask question. And uh, thank you for. Ah, yeah. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> yes, mm. I'm sorry to. to like it's it. very beautiful, Guru. I like this. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So, so um, next year, someone else may may uh, receive something like that. So, if people contribute more in the way you did. No, okay definitely. then. <laughs> yes, um, and I hope that the people can, uh, you know, like produce works like Takuchi Sensei. This would be just amazing. Well, with this, I guess we we will close our webinar now. Thank you, Takuchi Sensei. Uh, we are going to fo keep following your work and your publications. And this was really nice that we could see in advance what you're going to publish this year. Uh, Professor Tenko, do you have some maybe comments to add? Um, no, I just really, really thank you for for the wonderful work and, and presentation, and and also for the the questions, um, opening a new discussions, and I'm sure we will see Antonella very soon in our webinar. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, we would love to. So this is the direction that we want to go, and um, thank you very much for. Um, your interest, we, we keep a high number of uh, attendees all the time, and I'm very, very happy. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Thank you um, so much. we are going to keep you posted. We're going to have a, a new webinar next month. So, see you soon, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. It was really a pleasure to see you all here especially to the audience from China. Thank you for joining us. I'm very, very happy that you could join today. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.